You know, over the years, I've met some out there and crazy people. And I think we can all say that we've met crazy people. But the thing that when we say they're crazy, it's only our perception that they are crazy because we can't understand where they're coming from. And when you say they're crazy, people just think, oh, well, they're making it all up. So in other words, you say someone's crazy, they're a liar, don't believe anything they say. But that's not actually the case. Because, um, well, I think we all can be a little crazy at times. And the thing is that to other people, looking at a lot of the things I say, even just normal things, people are going to say, I'm crazy. Well, they do anyway. The boys at Nightcap call me crazy, <laughs> amongst other names. But that is their perception. And other people have different perceptions of me. But there are people that do attract the common perception of, wow, they're crazy. And one of them is Alan Hamer. I mean, I shared um, a garage. I slept in a bed next to this guy for months. Uh, I know this guy. <laughs> He's not just a nameless face. So I see him popping up in all the OSTF stuff. And he's really got a, a bee in his bonnet about Mark McMurtry at the moment. And, well, this is to you, Alan Hamer. If you don't want to be perceived as crazy, can you start putting things in a way that people can understand them? You make claims, but say that will be revealed later. You've been doing this for years, drip feeding people. Now, crunch time has pretty much come for you to dish up or shut up. I've seen your videos on all your different channels where you've done a, given bits of this document and I've seen you, you know, where you've put up Facebook posts where you've given another bit of another document and, oh, look, here's the account that Mark McMurtry gets money out of, gets paid from, and nothing else about it. You cannot keep playing these games with people. If you want to actually get some credibility, stop being in that mind space where you know other people can't understand you. I know you know how to talk sense. I've heard you do it. You're not always crazy and out there. Because there's one thing that I've come to understand in this, this world is that no matter how much people may exaggerate the truth and make up the truth, there is always an element of truth somewhere in there. And sometimes crazy people, well, what we perceive as crazy, have a way of describing things that we can't understand. So let's get past this you know, Alan Hamer is crazy and you shouldn't listen to anything he says because he's crazy. Because there are people out there that are asking the same questions. You know, he not only drops names of tribal elders and respected ones, but he also has photographs of them. And I also know that he has actually got in touch with some of those elders in those tribal communities where others have no clue how he got onto country and how he actually found this elder. So there's a lot of things that Alan Hamer, don't you, Alan? You get up to lots of things. You have been around so many communities all over Australia. And we won't go into my previous experiences with Alan because I've already done videos on that. This one is more specifically 
Alan Hamer, you have to start explaining the things that you post. And don't say, oh, I'm dyslexic and you get it all back the front. No, you post a complete document and then you say, why it is significant. You don't leave these little cryptic clues that all to be advised. That is game playing and you've got to stop playing the games. Now in the spirit that Alan Hamer is not 100% telling 100% lies and that there's a grain of truth in in what we call crazy, but we just can't understand what he's trying to say because, Alan, you're not piecing it together for us, okay? It's like having a jigsaw puzzle with half the pieces missing. You're not giving the pieces that are needed for people to understand. And you know that it's in your head you need to tell people. You put a document up. What is the significance of that document? What does it prove? And zooming in on a little part of a document, giving out uh, BSB account numbers and everything, that means jack shit. It's got to tie into something. It's got to be, where's the rest of the document? You know, you need to start bringing those things out. Not snippets, the whole lot. Uh, otherwise, as I said, it's really time to put up or shut up. Now, I think you know by now, Alan, that I am interested in anything you may have documented proof that will aid the cause against exposing what's going on with the OSTF, Mark McMurtry and others. And you've got so much to do with all these elders. Surely you can get hold of what have they signed with the OSTF. You must be able to get in there and talk to these elders and say, right, let's find out one simple question that I have been seeing so many people ask and getting earfuls of abuse out of OSTF and Mark McMurtry and all the other OSTF trolls. And it's a simple question. It was just asked as a simple question too. What are the, who are the tribes in the OSTF? Is that a big secret? And what is wrong with asking that question? There are so many people out there now that are asking questions of the OSTF. How do you work? What do you do with the money? You know, and who are the tribes that have signed up that you claim to represent? And those ones that you do claim to represent, let's see those signed documents that you would take and make public in a court. Let's see them made public that you actually have any documents at all. Because you know what? It's all talk. Talk. There's actually no proof at all that anyone has ever signed up with the OSTF. For all that Mark McMurtry can prove, there are zero tribes in the OSTF and zero members. Yeah, he's got a cult following. I mean, seriously, the fan club of Mark McMurtry. You people are so lost. Fan club? Seriously, that is cult mentality. Uh, that's where you've got problems, where even the bros don't listen because, hey, you're attacking my bro. That bro could go out and commit any crime and he'd turn a blind eye to it because he's my bro and I'm going to stick up for him because he's trying to get something for me that I want. Well, you're all fakes at the OSTF. You're all fakes. And Alan Hamer, it's time that if you agree with that, 
to start dishing up the stuff. Like, I just watched before this video from the 9th of December this year. It, um, it's by Alan Hamer. That's Mayban. And apparently he's just claimed that he's confronted Mayban with the knowledge that he knows he's not even tribal he um Aboriginal. That he's I think he said he was Canadian. And basically Maybarn's giving in the cold shoulder because um yeah, he's brought that up. <laughs> well he gets around Alan Hamer, doesn't he? He comes out with all these things. But that's okay that he comes out with all these things because it's coming out of Alan's, Alan Hamer's mouth. He's crazy and he's got to be wrong. But the question still remains. Is what Alan Hamer claimed true? Is Mayburn actually even Aboriginal? <laughs> Is he even born in Australia? <laughs> well... Alan Hamer's not born in Australia. And you know how um, Mark McMurtry is said to be the chosen one of the tribes? Well, Alan, you made the claim, 275,000-year-old DNA, you know, the Hamer tribe, and gives you all the rights, but King Noddy over the land and King of the tribes and all of that. This is why people think you're crazy. Because you come out with shit like this. You know, that's a story. As it, and it is something that anybody can make up. Guess what? I've got 500 million year old DNA from... Oh, where can I have it from? Oh, I'm a Pleiadian. Well, that's actually probably true. We're probably all a bit of that anyway, but... <laughs> See, we can all say crazy shit and be out there. But when you need to come back down to earth and deal in reality, you need to start giving people information that they can deal with in reality. Because what good is having 275,000-year-old DNA? Uh, yeah. So, when it comes down to you, Alan Hamer, I think you might remember me if you don't. You know that garage that you couldn't put the garage door down on because the boys wouldn't allow it? I actually met some good people there, you know, Tay and Gav. And, yeah, in amongst some crazies. But only to the extent of where, well, there was one, another crazy there that, yeah, he, he drove me crazy. He said such stupid things that nobody could understand. But the guy had a heart of gold, you know, and when needed to, he could actually come back to reality and communicate with you. And that's no different than you, Alan Hamer. I know you've got your moments of sanity where you can communicate. You don't need to make up all these excuses, oh, I'm dyslexic and I've got this, that and the other and you've got all these people chasing after you and, you know, we know that, okay? So don't spend the whole video explaining all that. Just tell us what you know about the OSTF, about Mark McMurtry and their involvement with the tribes. Share any documents you have. I'll leave a link for my Facebook page. You can come PM me there as anyone and everyone else has done and pass on the things that I can then use to share with others. And this is how it will work, is that we all share what we have and piece it together. Because there are people out there that are fully aware that, you know, you cannot dismiss someone simply because they are putting it across in a really crazy way that you can't understand. You've got to remember there's an element of truth in everything. Even in every lie, there is an element of truth. And every basic salesman knows that. Even religions know that. That without that core foundation 
of that element of truth, you will not be able to draw people in. Because if it's complete and utter fabrication, no one will ever pay it any credence. But the thing about Alan Hamer is that he has been through so many different communities all throughout Australia over the years. He's got a purpose in this and he's acquired a lot of information on people. That was actually his job, is his job. And in his moments, he will tell you that, <laughs> like he did me. And yeah, people could say, oh, you listen to a crazy person. You know, I just finished explaining that. I thought that crazy by definition is just merely the fact that it's not normal and that we don't have the framework to understand where they're coming from. I mean, there are a lot of what are classified as mental illnesses that it is merely, um, well, look, everybody has the right to their own perception. And yet, if they do have their own perception, if it's not within certain acceptable guidelines, we call them crazy. But that's then saying that their truth is invalid, which it isn't. Just because we think they're crazy doesn't mean they haven't got a story to tell. Yes, it's frustrating to get through sometimes to actually try and understand what they're saying because they are just not on the same wavelength as us. So it's a matter of people working together. I try to get it on your wavelength more and you trying to get on mine so that we can communicate this information and understand what are you trying to tell people, Alan Hamer? You say you have all this evidence of, well, there's a lot going on in the intelligence community. There's a lot going on in cold case murder files. Where is all this stuff? And please, if it's not associated with those things, do not send any stuff on Clive Stokes. You know, I went through that with you years ago. There's nothing that can be achieved by something back then, okay? Use what we can use now. In the now, all right? Clive's gone. All you can do is try and justify that you were right. It's not going to change anything. But if you have something that can help the tribes, that can explain to people what the OSTF, what Mark McMurtry and all of the others associated with them have been up to that you claim, that's something that you can change now. That is something that you can affect. Do not, as I said, sit on it and go, look, here's a little bit of a corner of a document and, well, to be advised. Fuck off with your to be advised. When are you going to advise people? 10 years time? 15? It's time to dish up or shut up. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to get people to give you stuff, isn't it? Huh? And you call him crazy. Well, as I said, we're all crazy by somebody else's perception. Like, I think it's actually crazy that any Aboriginal man calls himself a Christian. Because how can you be Aboriginal and tribal and Christian, because isn't that like serving two religions, two beliefs? You, ca you can't do it. You know, you can be tribal and hold your culture and your heritage, or you can follow the white man's religion and be bound by a set of beliefs that is not your tribal heritage. So, you know, when I hear all these ones that are claiming to be Aboriginal and Christian, it's like, 
Uh, isn't that kind of like an oxymoron? That's like having two religions. You can't do that, can you? I don't know. How many tribal Aboriginals are also Christian? Or practice some other religion? Good question. Because, you know, you either believe in your culture or you don't. You, you can't serve two masters. You know, it's just that simple. Anyway, I've put it out there, Alan. And uh, anybody else, too, that I know there are others on um, that have been giving the OSTF an earful. Kylie Jerome, yeah, good on you, girl. And Donna, yeah. Uh, seeing what some of these people say publicly, and then I get sent posts of what they say in private groups, I'm talking about the OSTF trolls. I mean, seriously, the women are even women haters. <laughs> they are so much brainwashed into the OSTF mentality. You've just actually got to consider that these ones that attack on behalf of the OSTF are really damaged goods. And you don't need to respond to their... Um, warped perspective you know I kept reading through so many of the different comments over you know the last months and one thing that keeps standing out after looking into the flat earth community and experiencing flat earthers it, it, there's kind of a, a the same kind of attitude from OSTF members like you'll ask them a simple question. Then they'll come back with this whole tirade of something that didn't never even answer that question, completely avoided it. And then after they've said it, go, well, now I've said it. That's proof you're wrong and I'm right. And you sit there and you read the comments and you laugh at it because it's like, when are people ever going to realise that just because you can type something, just because you can say it doesn't make it right? Like, guess what? I'm the Queen of England. I just said that, so it must be right. I could type it down, so it must be right. But guess what? I'm not the Queen of England, and I certainly would not want to be. Damn, that's a nasty place to be. <laughs> Anyway, I've put it out there. Alan, dish up or shut up. It's time to bring your stuff out and, well, bring down the fakes. If you say they're fakes, if you say you've got proof, bring it on. Send me a PM and let's get it happening. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just going to brush over your comments like most people do. you got a chance, you know? Take it. Anyway, catch you next time.